Hi guys! DSA is one topic for which you do need a lot of practice. You cannot be sure of any one particular topic by doing just two or three questions. We are slowly moving our one level up in binary trees and it is such an important topic and I highly recommend you to be consistent right now. It's a great opportunity. We are practicing in a community. I am here to help you out. I am showing up every single day. All you have to do is come watch the video, practice with me, ask me your doubts. I am here to clear all your doubts and we as a community can push each other up. You can go comment and let me know that you are present. If no one else, at least I will feel motivated that I will know that, okay, you are showing up every day and I will be able to push you also. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with today's question. So this is the question that we are going to do today. We have to find height of a binary tree. Now to quickly revise, binary tree can have at max two children. Every node can have at max two children. So node might have like zero, one or two children. So here if you see a node has left child and a right child and it has some integer data value. Now what do we have to do? We have to find its height. Now what does height mean? So here if you see, so what is a tree? It is a hierarchical data structure. So there are levels to it. So there is one level, there is second level. Since there are two levels in this binary tree, the output is two. Basically the height of this binary tree is two. Here there are three levels. So one is the child of two and three is the child of one. That is why there are three levels to it and the height of the binary tree is three. So we have to find height of any binary tree. Now, how do we break this bigger problem to smaller sub problems? See, here we know that if we knew like the height of the children, we will be able to know the height of the like bigger tree. How is that? See here, if you see two, it has no left child, right? But what is the, uh, what is the height of its right sub tree? See, if we don't consider this two at all, and if we consider only this subtree, like one and three, what is its height? It's two. And then we add one more level to it. That is, we add one more uh, root node to it, and we have our bigger height, right? Obviously, see, this is one uh, node, and it has left subtree, and it has right subtree, right? Now, if we know the heights of the left and the right subtree, and we know that whichever is bigger, we can add that to our answer. Why is that? See, suppose the height of the left subtree was say 2 and the height of the right subtree was say 3. We will obviously have to consider the bigger height, right? Because we have to consider its height. Now, whatever is the biggest height is what we have to return. So, we will just add 1 to the level because we are adding one more level to our sub problem, right? And then we will return our answer. So don't worry if it's not clear. It will be completely clear. It's like basic logic. You will be able to understand simply. So let's quickly write like one liner code that we should have. See, what are we going to return? We are going to return one plus one is going to basically add the present level. So whatever node is given to us, initially root will be passed to us, right? So we will add one level. And then what do we have to add? We have to add height of the subtrees and we have to find the maximum height. So what are we going to do? We are going to do max. And then we will have to check that which, which subtree has bigger height. Like left subtree is bigger or right subtree is bigger. And to find that, what do we do? We call the function recursively for the left child and for the right child. Let's do it. Don't worry if it's not clear. It will be clear. See height of node ka left. So this is one height. That is the left subtree ka height. And what do we do? We find node ka right. See, let's try to visualize it. See, this is basically returning you height of the left subtree. This is basically returning you right of the height of the right subtree. Now, whichever is bigger is going to contribute the answer to the answer. And you are adding one to the present level that you're dealing with. Now we have to think of the edge cases. We have to think of the base conditions. See, we are always calling the height value, the height function again and again for the left child and for the right child. Now, obviously there will be some time where the left child or the right child will become null. Right. So like over here, if we go to the left of two, it is none. And when we pass to it, what will happen? We will add one and then we will call a uh, height of null ka left. And then we will end up having what? It will uh, come to runtime error. That is why we don't want that. So what are we going to do? We are going to add a check that if your node that has been passed is equal to null PTR. So basically, what is the height at that time? Height is zero itself. Right. So this makes sure that I never actually call this uh, line if my node is none. So I can always keep calling this again and again. Let's quickly compile this and see. As we have done in the previous questions also, we are going to write code in multiple ways so that you are used to writing code in multiple ways and you can understand that, okay, 
uh, when you see a new code, you can understand that why a person has written like that. So this works. Now see here what I was doing is I was always calling this height function again and again irrespective of the fact that the left value is present and the right value is present or not. Even if the child was null, I was again and again calling it. Only when the uh, node itself that is passed is null, I am returning back zero, right? This is one way to do it. But this is actually making many unnecessary recursive calls. Even when there is no left child, even when there is no right child, I am calling the function. So another way to write it is that I see that, okay, if there is a node called left, or if there is a left child present, only then you call it. So what am I going to do? I am going to take two integer values. One I am calling left height and I am putting it as zero and one I am calling right height and putting it as zero. And then what I will do, I will check that if the left child is present only then. So basically if left child is present, then I am going to update the left height by calling the function and passing the left child. See, I will call the function only if the left child is present, otherwise I'm not going to call it. Similarly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check that if right child is present, then I'm going to call the function, I'm going to calculate the right height. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to call the same function and I'm going to pass node ka right child, right? Otherwise, I have initialized both the heights to zero. See, even if there is no left node present, even if there is no right child or left child present, then the height is zero, right? So that's fine. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to return one plus, so basically adding the level and I'm going to return max of left height and right height. Let's comment this code and see whether this works or not. One thing to check is that initially when the node is being passed, initially when the root is being passed, can there be a case when there are like zero uh, nodes present? So for that, you can see that our condition is given that the number of nodes will at least be one. So the initial check is already there. And after that, we are making sure that we never call the function for node equal to null because we have already put the checks. The function will never be called with node equal to null. So we don't need to put check that if node is equal to null, return zero. So let's do this. Let's submit and see. It works. See, but in interviews, I highly recommend you to tell your interviewer that this is one edge case that you should have. You should always handle this. See, if node is equal to null, you should return zero. So I would say that the ideal way to write code is this. Even though this was much smaller and this is much bigger, what is happening over here is, firstly, you're putting a check that if node is null, you're returning zero. And also you're avoiding the unnecessary recursive calls. You are calling this only when like node ka left child is present. You are calling this only if node ka right child is present. But at the cost of what? You are always putting an extra check. Here, although you were calling extra recursive functions, you didn't have to call this extra check. So that is the difference in writing both the codes. Uh, some people will prefer writing one line of code, two line of code, and then you can run this. Let's quickly talk about the expected time complexity and expected auxiliary space complexity. So expected time complexity is order of n. And what is n? n is the number of nodes that is given to us. Now, number of nodes is n. And you're visiting all the nodes once only. See, even when you're going on the left side or on the right side, you will go to each node only once. You're not going to go more than that. So your time complexity becomes order of n. And what is your auxiliary space complexity? That is the extra space that you're going to require for the recursive stack. So that will be order of n. Why? Suppose your tree was like this. See, there is no child on the left. There is child on the right. There is no child on the right. There is child on the left. So basically here n is 3 only and the height is also 3. So basically height is equal to the number of nodes. So in that case what happens your recursive stack will have all the elements. See first you will call the function for this node right. Then you are going to call the function for this node. Then you are going to call the function for this node. So your recursive stack will have like height for node 3, for height for node 1 and for node 2. So your function is present in the recursive stack three times with three different values. So basically the size of the recursive stacks becomes order of n and that is why your auxiliary space complexity is order of n. If you have any other doubts, let me know. I am here to help you out. I just need you to show up and practice. Okay, uh, let's increase our mode level up tomorrow and I hope to see you soon.